Hey there everyone, welcome back to another video in the Japan series for 2018. Uh, this one is particularly interesting because I'm working with a company that I've been wanting to work with for quite a while now, and that is DJI, and they have sent me the Osmo Mobile 2. Now this is a three axis smartphone stabilizer, and I'm hoping that in this video I can create a cool visual concept of something that I've been wanting to make for quite a while now. And we're going to be filming with the iPhone 10. So it sits in like this and then we just need to balance it. Um, so we just center it by its gravity that way and this way. Uh, so we just adjust the knobs and dials. It takes about 20 seconds to do that. And I'd already previously done it. Why would you want a stabilizer? Now, to me, the essence of great video um, has a few certain aspects, I guess. One of which is stable shots. To me, having a really stable, silky smooth shot is incredibly noticeable. Uh, something that just always catches my eye. Now, it's not in everyone's style, but for me personally, I really love um, having stabilized shots. It, to me, that elevates the quality uh, immensely. So what's new with the Osmo Mobile 2 uh, compared to the original, which was incredibly popular, by the way? So mainly, this is much, much cheaper. I think it's around 130 US dollars, something like that. The previous one, I think, was upwards of like 250 or something like that. So now, I must admit, first and foremost, it, it does feel a little bit cheaper. Uh, that's because it's using a plastic body rather than a metal body, um, but that allows it to be lighter. So weighing up the pros and cons, um, no pun intended on that. This has also got a higher capacity battery. So built in, uh, you've got a battery that can last DJI claim up to like 15 hours. Um, now I don't think I'm necessarily gonna be filming for 15 hours with this, but what can be useful with this is you can use it to charge your smartphone. So inevitably your phone is gonna run out of battery because Let's face it, it's 2018 and phones never last. Um, so you can charge your battery in your phone as well as powering the Osmo. And then the grip itself it has got pretty much the same controls as what you had in the previous one, uh, just with the addition of a zoom slider. So if your phone supports it like this one does, uh, you can toggle between telephoto and wide um, or slide between the two. And then a final aspect to this that is really quite interesting, uh, and I've not seen it on the other mobile smartphone stabilizers, and uh, that is that the clamp can go into vertical mode. So that's perfect for Instagram stories, uh, Snapchat, and if you're doing any sort of like vertical video. But enough about the specs and everything, let's head into Shibuya and get some super stable, steady shots of the Shibuya scramble. All the S's. <laughs> Shibuya! Shibuya, 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 Shibuya. <laughs> So that sequence you would have just seen uh, was all filmed around Shibuya Crossing and now I'm going to show you how I made it. Uh, right, so we're going to get some shots around here and um, in my mind I've got some ideas of some things I want to do. So I want to show like the tracking features of this with the DJI app. Um, so you can select certain objects and you can pan around them and it will just follow them. Uh, likewise, I can probably tap on my face right now and now if I'm moving, it should keep my face in yeah, it does a pretty good job of that. 
that was not bad. Because yeah, other gimbals, when you use them, it just kind of like doesn't really flow that well. Um, so if you want to start vlogging, this is quite a good option as well. Just make sure you do look right into the camera, uh, not looking at yourself. Because if you look at yourself, it looks a bit off camera, which is a bit weird, isn't it? This also has time-lapse and hype-lapse functionality, so I may try that because there's obviously a lot of people. And also, it's Saturday, so it's incredibly busy. So having this record button is actually really handy. We did just attempt something that was maybe a little bit silly. Trying to do a full loop during one set of the crossing. <laughs> Came out bumpy, but um, what the hell, eh? Here we go, motion lapse. Set the position of where you want the camera to be in the first place. Lock the exposure and focus, plus set it for the next location, plus I'm just going to do two. Uh, duration, so I know that the crossing goes for two minutes, um, or every two minutes. So we're going to do this time lapse for five minutes and I'm just going to hold it steady. Let's go from when it's empty. And just prepare it and then it will slowly move it and do a time lapse during that time. To be honest, this is probably the coolest function of it. Like to set just a slow moving time lapse with ease. Yeah. The lighting is kind of nice mm -hmm. going in the middle. That shadow's gone harsh and then soft. Mm -hmm. Right, let's have a look. Ah, oh, cool. That's actually really cool. Yeah, that's pretty sick. Shame about all the crisscross on the window, but we can't do much about that. So let's just run through some final thoughts on this. Um, it's obviously been shooting with it all day today and I've thoroughly enjoyed this. Like this has, I guess, created some stable smooth shots as I wanted, um, but there's some features on this that have actually been above and beyond what I expected of it. Where this does really thrive is using that main DJI app and uh, you can, you know, go through all the features of things and just like you know, get everything working in tandem with Bluetooth directly with this. You can use other camera apps if you want to, um, but you get the most benefits using the DJI one. Now there are a couple of elements that I could see being uh, improved in the future. Um, some of these are software, which is great because that means they can just be dished out with an update. Um, so firstly, with the tracking. So when you're actually tracking a particular object, it works really well, like it tracks perfectly well. However, the composition on it is slap bang in the middle. So that means if you are filming someone, you've got their face tracked, they're gonna have all this head height above them. Um, and it's really hard to sort of maneuver the camera, but still keep it tracking. So if you do wanna do anything sort of a little bit more creative with the composition, you need to do that manually. Um, that's just a, a slight caveat. That's just been a bit annoying with it because um, I'd love to have been able to use the tracking fully. Uh, instead, I've just gone manual with things. Uh, another aspect that's been a little bit kind of odd, I guess, is the way that the clamp spins from horizontal to vertical. Uh, so it goes anti-clockwise, which actually means that your phone needs to come out of the holder before it can switch to the other orientation. Um, I can understand to some extent because it probably forces people to rebalance it. However, it would actually just be so much easier um, to physically just make it spin the other direction. Whether they doing that intentionally, I'm not sure. Um, and then likewise, although this is great that you can charge your phone with it, you can't actually get the cable into the phone whilst it's in the clamp. Um, so you would again need to use it for separate basis and it's more a case of when you're not using this as a gimbal, you can then use it as your battery to charge your phone. So it solves that issue, um, but it'd be nice if there was like a dock connector or something in here. But of course, how do you change it for all the different camera smartphones? There's all these different caveats and pros and cons to things. But on the whole, this has created some fantastic results today. Uh, I'm really pleased with the footage that I got. And uh, I think we got lucky um, with the weather and the lighting because it's gone really gray now. But uh, yeah, if you are interested in this, then um, do check out the description. There's more info and um, looking forward to filming more with it. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video um, and I hope you've enjoyed seeing it on my Instagram stories as well. So I've been doing the motion lapse 
um, and they've worked incredibly well. Uh, that's probably been my favorite feature of this among the, um, the main stabilization. It's just being able to set points and do a time lapse in between. Super simple, super creative, love it. Right, hope you've enjoyed this and I'll catch you in the next video from of course this wonderful place of Japan. All right, speak to you soon. See you later, bye bye.